that's one way of using tomatoes against the Japs. But not very effective. Science shows us a better way. The chemical and medical research have demonstrated that the tomato is rich in vitamin C. And vitamin C is just what the troops need. It keeps them healthy and fighting fit. Apart from their health-giving value, tomatoes, fresh or canned, provide a welcome addition to any meal, particularly in the tropics. And how welcome they'd have been to these otters on the Kokoda Trail, making the best of their limited rations of flour and water in these miserable scones. Not a very satisfactory meal for fighting men, and not one likely to improve their stamina under these arduous conditions. These boys need vegetables, particularly tomatoes, and Australia can grow them to perfection. But we must have more, and this is a job you can do. Victorian growers are already producing two million cases of tomatoes for canning each year. That's a lot of tomatoes, but not enough to feed the forces in the southwest Pacific, even though civilian consumption has been drastically cut. With its fertile soils and abundant water, there is no reason why Victoria should not produce this year at least 50% more tomatoes for canning than it did last season. Growing tomatoes suitable for canning is not the simple job it looks. Successful tomato culture starts with the selection of the seed. Select outstanding plants in the field. The selected plants should be free from disease and carry a heavy crop of large, well-shaped tomatoes. These are not picked until they're dead ripe when the seed will mature and ready for extraction. Here we see seed extraction on a large scale. The fruit is pulped in a suitable crusher and fermented in large wooden vats until the seed has separated from the pulp. To extract enough seed for your own requirements is a simple process, but one worth doing properly. The tomatoes, which must be dead ripe, are cut and the pulp squeezed into a glass or porcelain jar. Metal containers, unless enameled, are not so suitable. The pulp is left standing for two or three days to ferment. During this time, the seeds sink to the bottom of the jar and the pulp floats to the surface. At this stage, the contents are stirred to enable any seeds trapped in the floating pulp to sink to the bottom. Clean water is added, and separation of the seed is completed by pouring off the liquid and floating pulp. After several washings in fresh water, the seed is tipped onto a cloth. This is wrung out to remove excess water, and the seed is set out to dry on paper, calico, or sheets of fly wire. The seed should be dried quickly, otherwise it may start to germinate. Some diseases are carried with the seed, so disinfect the seed before sowing. The most satisfactory method is, to, is the dried treatment with copper oxychloride. This powder is placed with the dried seed in a bottle and shaken vigorously for a few seconds to ensure an even coating of dust on every seed. To remove excess dust, the seed is screened over ordinary fly wire and is now ready to sow. The wet treatment is best done before the seed has dried. The seed is soaked for five minutes in a solution of one part of corrosive sublimate in 3,000 parts of water. After soaking, the seed should be washed several times in fresh water and dried. The bulk of the seedlings in the north are raised in cold frames. 
but for earlier sewing a hot frame is needed. This differs from a cold frame only in the use of stable manure to provide bottom heat. A layer of cinders or coarse sand on the bottom of the frame provides for drainage. And then in goes the manure which is spread evenly over the frame and trampled down firmly. At least nine inches of fresh stable manure is required. Watering the manure increases the development of heat. A good compost or any rich friable topsoil is needed for the seed bed. This is placed over the manure to a depth of approximately four inches, tramped down firmly and level with a rake. seed should be sown thinly, either broadcast or in drills, and covered with a thin layer of fine soil. Water lightly with a fine rose and finally cover with glass. When the plants are young, they are best watered before midday, so as not to be cold or wet overnight. When the seedlings are three to four inches high, they should be hardened by leaving the glass off during the day. A block of wood under the top edge would allow a little air through at night. The most common disease in the seed bed is damping off. Infection occurs here at soil level. The stem is being constricted and the plants topple over. To prevent damping off, the commercial nurseryman who raises millions of tomato seedlings each year, sterilize the soil in which the seedlings are grown. This is done by steam, the soil being placed in pits into which high pressure steam is passed. This treatment is not practicable for the ordinary grower, but effective control of seed bed disease may be secured by sterilizing the soil with formalin when it's available. The soil from the sterilizing pits is placed in the trays in which the nurseryman raises his seedlings. The seed is broadcast by hand, pressed into place, covered with a sprinkling of soil, firmed again by gentle pressure from a piece of flat board and placed under glass. After a few days in the hothouse, the young seedlings show up and later, when the first rough leaf appears, are pricked out into other boxes to give them more space to develop. Careful watering, control of hothouse temperature and good aeration enable these seedlings to grow healthily onto the stage when they may be hardened off and forwarded to the grower. But before they are planted, there's much to be done. The land should be carefully cultivated and graded to simplify control of water. Where planting is done by hand, hilled rows three to four feet apart are ploughed up a little ahead of the planting gang. Artificial fertiliser should be ploughed under when preparing the hills so as to be in position to promote root growth and give the plants a good start. Use 200 weight per acre of a mixture of three parts of super to one part of ammonium sulfate or blood and bone. The best time to put plants out in the field is when they're approximately six inches high and have been well hardened off. Deep planting is recommended. The first pair of rough leaves should be just above the soil surface. Holes for planting are prepared with a short-handled hoe or by hand. After planting, the soil is firmed by pressing around the seedlings and a light watering given to each plant. Planting machines enable a much greater area to be planted with the limited manpower available. These machines work on a level soil surface 
hitting up being done after planting. Once the plants are established, they require careful irrigation. The tomato is very sensitive to excess water. Water should be applied only to keep the plants growing steadily and to prevent them from wilting. For good irrigation, it's essential that the field be laid out in short runs. These short runs, used by the market gardener for cabbages, cauliflowers and even tomatoes, represent one extreme. These runs, of course, would be far too short for the average tomato grower in northern Victoria, but it's interesting to compare them with the long runs commonly used in the north. Runs of eight to ten chains lead to overwatering and drainage difficulties. Lengthy runs such as these are best broken by cross ditches, giving the ideal run two to three chains long. Use your land to the best advantage. Tomatoes will not give maximum yields if grown on the same land year after year. For northern Victoria, the rotation, peas or beans, tomatoes, and then a short fallow is suggested. Such a rotation minimizes the build-up of disease. Spotted or bronze wilt is the most common disease. The plants cease growing, become stunted, and assume a bronze color. The leaves are spotted in this typical fashion. Control is difficult, but where the trouble is serious, late planting will reduce its incidence. Of the insect pests, Vegetable weevil and tomato moth are the most serious. The weevil lives in the soil during the day and attacks young plants at night. The tomato moth is known to all growers. Both pests can be controlled by dusting or spraying with arsenate of lead. One or two applications early in the season will check vegetable weevil, but several applications may be needed for the tomato moth. These should be applied thoroughly at intervals of seven to 12 days from flowering time until the fruit is ready to pick. Sound fruit simplifies the picking operations. For canning, tomatoes should be picked when firm, red ripe. A much more mature stage than tomatoes are picked for market. Plants should be handled carefully at picking time to avoid damage to both the plants and the immature fruit. Correctly spaced rows allow pickers room to walk between them. Crowded rows mean damaged fruit. Care in all these operations, picking, tipping into cases, sorting, and subsequent loading for dispatch to the cannery, all contribute to good quality fruit and payable returns. The price fixed by the Commonwealth Government for canning tomatoes makes the job of growing them a profitable one and enables even the small grower to make a valuable contribution to the war effort without loss to himself. On arrival at the cannery, the tomatoes are inspected and appraised. Through this conveyor, they go to the washing machine, where they are cleaned by streams of water under pressure before passing along the sorting belt. Here, they are graded for color and general quality, and all damaged fruit is removed. The canning quality fruit passes through a steam bath on its way to the benches, where it is cored, peeled, and packed into tins. Tins are topped off with puree, sterilized in another steam bath, and lids are applied by this ingenious machine. Then comes the cooking. Two of these baskets, each holding 450 tins, are lowered into each retort. Cooking conditions are carefully controlled by a skilled operator with an abundant supply of superheated steam at his command. Labeling, packing and stenciling complete the job. And each day in the season, this one cannery alone turns out 25,000 tins of tomatoes and tomato juice. Tins full of nutritious food and health-giving vitamins. Canned tomatoes and canned vegetables generally can make a wonderful difference to the meals and to the health of our troops. 
you can help. Grow all the tomatoes you can. The boys up north will certainly appreciate them. <laughs>